I've been using this Nothing 2 for the last week pretty much exclusively since that last video that I put up. And as with everything, there are some things that I absolutely love and some things that I, well, not hate, but there's some things that I wish were slightly better, but that's the way of the world. And you only get to find out those things by using the phone. As I say, I have been for the last week a lot. Now, if you remember, we started off last week's video talking about the company themselves and the bad dealings that I'd had. With them. I've still not had so much as a return message on Twitter, but I did eventually get my invoice. It just turned up randomly, middle of the night one night, so I have now at least got an invoice. But uh, interestingly, since mentioning about the dealings I'd had with the company last week on the video and on Twitter, a number of people have been in touch and said that they too have had exactly the same problems. So I think nothing as a company have certainly got their issues that they need to sort out, which is such a shame because what they're making is really good and innovative and great fun. So now I've got the invoice, I can sort of park the news about the company and the phone itself, it's, it's, it's kind of funky and still just a little bit professional. You know the way when you go into a bar and you meet somebody and you immediately get on with them, but there's just one little needle maybe that you're not so keen on. That's pretty much what it's been like with this phone. Most of what I found, I've really, really enjoyed using. Now, I think I made an apology last week when I got the Wi-Fi test wrong, the speeds test. This week, I've got another apology to make. I've been calling the back of this phone plastic, and it's not, it is glass. But all I would say is, compared to my iPhone, it feels very, very different quality. So apologies, it is glass on the back of this Nothing 2, but it just doesn't feel it. One of the areas, of course, that Apple does always win out on is with software updates. They are the kings of that. With Apple, it's not unusual to get seven or eight years of updates on a device. With this phone, with the Nothing 2, as far as I can make out, checking out all the literature from Nothing, I think you're only guaranteed three years of updates. Not unusual for Android phones, but they're not breaking the rule in that respect either. They may turn out to give longer so software support, but that's what they're saying at the moment. During the course of the last week, I've been in touch with you, uh, asking you what you'd like me to cover further on this week's video. And one of the comments that came up was about the, the lock screen and whether you could have a completely empty lock screen. Unfortunately, you can't. It doesn't look bad. It's a fairly clean screen anyway, but you've got to have some widgets on it. I certainly looked around and I couldn't find a way of having a completely empty lock screen. And given the design of this phone and the fact they are that little bit different, I think it'd be a really neat feature. Maybe that could be done via a software update. We're all interested in the cameras and I did cover them last week, but there's more features I want to go through this week. Last week when I tested the cameras, I tested them outside. Well, the weather here was absolutely awful earlier today. So I've done some tests for you here in the studio using first of all the selfie camera and I did the selfie camera on the nothing. And also I thought I'd just give you a comparison of what it was like shooting on the iPhone as well. If you watched last week's video, you will have seen that the selfie camera was glitching quite a lot. So a few of you have been in touch with me this week asking me to test it again. And this time I'm going to try it in two different modes as well. This is with HDR turned off and it's shooting in 1080, 30. You can also shoot in 1080, 60 frames per second. And now I'm going to go over and switch it over to having the HDR turned on and see what that's like, see if it makes any difference. But when you've got the HDR turned on, you can only shoot in 1080, 30 FPS. And here you go, this is the selfie cam with HDR turned on. See if it makes any difference at all to the skin tones. We are in good lighting here. So this should give you an idea of how good this selfie camera can be. Last week we were outdoors, this week we're under decent studio lighting. Just to give you an idea of what an extra thousand pounds does for you, this is now my iPhone 14 Pro being shot ProRes 4K 24 FPS. With the main camera, you get to shoot in 0.6 times one or times two. And where I said last week I wasn't that happy with the results, once you start playing around with this camera a bit, you can actually unlock some really, really good effects. And the best way I've found of doing that is going into the expert menu. And in there, you get things like autofocus, you get all kinds of white balance settings in there, and you even get exposure settings as well. So you can begin playing around with it and actually getting some really good results from the camera. I've been surprised how much better I've been able to work with the camera this week.
the slow motion is good and smooth as well. I've done some shots here in 120 FPS and 240 FPS, but you can even shoot in 480 FPS slow-mo if you wanted to. And also took a chance to take a pano shot the weekend as well. And again, that was effortless. One of the other things that I like about this camera is they kind of, well, the phone in general, they debunk things, they demystify things. And for instance, when you go into the portrait setting, rather than just having the f-stop slider on there, which is all well and good if you know what f-stop is, they actually label it bokeh or bokeh, whichever it is, never sure. I say bokeh, but anyway, the blurriness behind you, it actually labels it so you know exactly what that f-stop button is for, which I say is just part of the charm of the OS on this phone. And with the video, I've done some stabilization shots this week with the stabilization on or off. And if storage is an issue on your phone, you also get the ability to shoot in H.264 or in H.265, giving you a little bit more room with the video files as well. So there's so many decent, thoughtful bits and pieces in the settings on this. The OS is just lovely to use, but definitely take a look at that expert setting in the camera. It unlocks the best of the cameras on this phone. The Glyph Composer. Now, that's an app that I mentioned last week and had only just downloaded, but I hadn't had a long time to play with it. This week I've spent some time with it. And as you know, the glyphs on this phone are a way of giving you notifications when the phone is face down. It works well, and you can just use the glyphs that come straight out of the phone, but with the Glyph Customizer app or Glyph Composer app, you can basically make up your own sounds, your own tones. When you open it up for the first time, you'll see it's got a preset of Dan in there, who I think was one of their customers, funnily enough, or something. Then if you open up that, you'll find there were four or five other settings you can go to. And think of those settings almost like chords. They're a collection of sounds. So the 606, for instance, sounds quite jazzy. You've got one that sounds more poppy and one that sounds a little bit more classical. You pick which of those sounds you want, go back to the composer, and then you tap out on the pads. You've got cymbals and hi-hats and toms and you make your own little sound up there and you can save them to use on app notifications. And also, of course, you can use those same sounds on people that you've got in your contacts as well. Maybe one of the other things they could do somewhere down the line would be to make the glyph lights either monochromatic to match the monochromatic app skins or multicolor. But maybe, as I say, that can be done in a future OS update. The 10 bit HDR LTPO display on this phone is lovely. It is so quick to use. In conjunction with the Snapdragon processor, the refresh rate on the screen, which jumps from a low of 1 hertz up to 120 hertz, it is so smooth to use. I've never had an issue scrolling. There's no wobble at all. It is super, super, super fast. I love it. And it compares really favorably up against both the Pixel 7 Pro and also even to my iPhone 14, which I keep coming back to, was three times the price of that. So the fact that I can mention this display in the same breath shows how genuinely impressed I've been with this display. Since I recorded the main part of this video, something else has just cropped up that I wanted to mention to you. So uh, apologies for the abrupt cut in here, but I know it's going to be hard for me to show on, on camera. But when I looked at the display of the Nothing Too Up Close, it's full of tiny, tiny little micro scratches. It's, it's really hard to catch it in the light. I'm doing my best here for you. But trust me, in, in real life, it's, it's not looking too good. Now, my iPhone has got two scratches on it. I can actually count them two after a year. I don't use screen protectors. I never have, so it's a fair comparison. And as you know, I sort of said that the glass on the back of this phone felt cheap. I mean, it is glass, but it doesn't feel like glass. This glass on the front, though, it's not wearing up very well at all. With the haptics, they've got a really nice, solid feel to them. But I just wish there was a way that you could maybe alter the amount of haptic feedback that you get, because it is quite intense. And most of the time, I like that. But uh, it might be a nice addition. Again, maybe that could be done via a software update if you could alter the amount of vibration that you get out of the motors. For me, they work pretty well, and they feel really resounding, and there's a solid feel to them. But I can imagine it might be a little bit jarring for some people. So again, that's something maybe they could think of in the future. You can change absolutely everything on this phone. The boldness of the font underneath the apps, the color of the font underneath the apps, the size of the icons themselves. You can have them large. One particular one can be very big, or you can just change the group size of all of the icons from small, medium to large. There's so many things on here 
that are just so individual that your phone will always be different to somebody else's phone. And don't forget, you can also buy icon packs if you want from Google's Play Store to go onto your phone as well. So it's so customizable. You have to pay for those. I haven't found any free sets of icons. Doesn't seem that nothing provide any more than the ones that come with the phone for free, but there are plenty of third party icons out there if you wanted to download a different icon pack and make your phone literally your phone. The sound has continued to be an issue. I can't find any EQ settings in the phone itself. If you can, do let me know, let's face it. It's not like I haven't made mistakes before, but I couldn't find any EQ settings for it. Now, I did try to play some music last week. I'm gonna try again this week. I'm gonna try and give you as good a reproduction as I possibly can of the music that I hear out of the speakers on this phone, but the speakers aren't good and they are probably the biggest letdown to the phone. Now I've got used to the camera. As long as you weren't shooting professional work with the camera, you'd be okay, but the speakers I think you'd get pretty unhappy with fairly quickly. But if you use Spotify, of course, don't forget you can go into Spotify and you can change the EQs of the sound in there. Now, I've always been an Apple Music user. It won't surprise you to know. But on here, I've been using Spotify and you can change the sound in there to get different profiles. Again, you've got a pop profile, a rock profile, a jazz profile, which just helps to at least take off some of the worst sounds and some of the worst aspects of the sound out the speakers on this phone. So maybe check that out in Spotify if you haven't already. And last week was a Brilliant week uh, for subs on the channel. I haven't seen growth like it, so I think we're onto something. By the time this video comes out, I'll just about be getting my hands on a Samsung Flip 5 as well. That will be landing with me, so if that interests you, make sure you get subbed. But thank you for all of you that have taken the time to subscribe to the channel. It really does make a huge difference. I can see it in the numbers on the channel. I can see it in the growth. So hopefully you're still enjoying the videos that I'm making for you, the information I'm giving to you, and the fact that I try to be honest, when I make a mistake, I'll admit I make a mistake. But if you've got a second just to maybe drop a sub for me, it would mean a huge amount to me. It really would. But if you did it last week, thank you. We're definitely on the right lines. When it gets to the voice recorder on the phone, yet again, it's very individual. I like their thoughts. I like what's gone behind it. You've got a choice of even having vocal focus, normal or environmental, and I'll give you some clips of what they sound like so you can make up your own mind if there's any real difference to them. The first of three sessions that I'm trying out recording with the voice recorder on the Nothing 2, this is in the vocal focus setting. Next up in the same app is the normal setting to hear if there's any difference at all. I'll be interested to listen back to these because uh, obviously I've not heard them yet, but I want to give you all of the various settings in this voice recorder app to see if the three settings made any difference. And lastly, this is the environmental setting. I don't know what that's going to bring to it, but anyway, that's the three settings in the voice recorder app on the Nothing Too phone, just so you can hear the difference, if indeed there is any difference. Don't forget, these are recorded in a, in a proper sound-treated podcast studio. The battery continues to amaze me. I think now I've charged it three times. It's quite a quick charging phone from zero to full in around about 40 to 50 minutes. I was trying to find out more details about the USB-C port on here, but I couldn't. But I don't think it's a Thunderbolt port. I think it's a standard USB-C speeds port on here. But it's it's just wonderful. I've never had a phone last as well as this. And don't forget, I'm using it an awful lot more now because I say I'm using it when I go out for walks. I'm using it for a lot of photography. For all the things I've been doing on this channel, I've been using it now. It doesn't just sit around anymore. And still the battery, you can barely put a dent in it. It just goes on and on and on. It is fantastic. Another thing that I forgot to mention last week, and I've never had the a, a device that does this, is the QI reverse charging. So for instance, if I am out during the day with both phones with me and I'm using my AirPods with my iPhone, I can pop those on the back of here and I can get a little bit of juice out quickly just to give me a little bit more extra time with my AirPods before I get back home. Reverse charging is something this has got that again, iPhone still hasn't got around to doing. So after another week of using this phone, I think it's even better than I did before. I really do. It's surprised me just how individual you can make this phone and things that I thought were a weakness before, one, taking to one side of the speakers, they're not good, but generally, you'll always be using some sort of earbuds with the phone, I would have thought. That's one side though, the camera for instance, that I didn't think was particularly good last week. If you just take some time, particularly in that expert setting, and go through and just play with the, the various settings you've got in there, the white balance and the exposure settings and so on, you can actually get some really good results. Play around with HDR, see what you like. You've got the choice of a 12 megapixel camera, a 50 megapixel camera. It's all in there. And whereas iPhone just kind of takes good pictures by default. With this, you do have to work a little bit harder to get those results, but there are great results in the cameras in this phone. I've 
been amazed at how much more I found in this phone in this last week and how much more performance I've got out of it. I'm really enjoying using it. And hopefully you are too. If you've got a nothing to, let me know your thoughts and let me know of anything that you think I've overlooked in this video that maybe you'd like me to cover in future videos. You can always get in touch with me or leave notes and comments underneath this video. I tried, you know, to get back to each and every one of you and I really do appreciate all the time you're taking to watch these videos with me. So if you've got a couple of more moments before I go this week, I'm going to leave some videos at the end for you. One is last week's video where I introduced you to Nothing 2. And then in, also, if you're interested in how it compares up against a Pixel 7 Pro, I'll leave a link to that video as well. But that's all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back with a video about the Samsung Flip 5 next week. Take care. See you soon.